us this morning. I do encourage folks to say hello to, uh, to anyone that you haven't met before, or if you haven't said hello to someone in quite a while, uh, to make sure to take that time. Today is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, and um, we'll start for the second half of summer, we're starting a, a new series, a uh, worship series. We're, we're calling it Celebrating Ordinary Time. I'll explain that a little bit more, but the last several weeks we talked about creation and the cosmos. Now I want to talk about where is God in ordinary time, ordinary life. Um, I don't have anything else to announce at this time, so I will just ask you to stand, and I'll ask you to follow along questions. Who are we? What do we do? And how do we do it? Redeemer Lutheran Church is a community of believers, together making Christ known, sharing in faith, life, and service. And our opening hymn is number 765. of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God and Father of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior, amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away, and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen. Let's sing uh, the refrain, verse 1, and refrain of our hymn of praise.
worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. first reading for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 15 verses 1 through 6. The reading. After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Psalms chapter 33, verses 12 through 22. The reading. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly the eyes of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our souls wait for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gospel reading in honor of Christ and his ministry. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes in and steals and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he, the master, will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You can be seated, except I invite our kids forward. I 
I can sit for this one. Oh, I may not get back up, though. You can sit, too. There you go. Well, right? Got some calves. I heard someone say it kills uh, fleas and ticks for up to 24 days. No, pastors dress different, and of course we act a little different. And sometimes people say, well, you're close to the guy upstairs. Do you think I'm any closer to God than... I, mean, I always pick on Bob. See Bob there? <laughs> Who do you think is closer to God, me or Bob? <laughs> we got a split decision. <laughs> Who do you think is closer to God, me or you? Who do you think does God's work more? I preach, right? Do all that stuff? Bob works on cars. You know, though, that when he works on cars, when he does it with heart and with faith for someone else, when he's think, looking out for them, wanting to make sure that their van is safe and that the door doesn't fall off again, <laughs> when he does that, he is worshiping God. He's showing, when he shows love and compassion for other people, he's also showing love and compassion for God. When he, when he shows a, a sense of work and that kind of ethic and the importance of doing things for other people, he's witnessing. He's preaching a sermon with his life. And you know, you do the same thing. When you're caring and loving towards others, you're preaching. You're showing your faith. They, they don't necessarily know why you do it, but one of the reasons you do that, one of the reasons why you show love and compassion is because others have done it for you, right? And they're doing it because God has created them and created you. So actually, I have a job. It's called being a pastor, but it doesn't put me any closer to God than being a student at school or a granddaughter. You're just as close to God, and you're doing God's work. I just like to say that. Amen? All right. I'm not sure if the other guys in the garage would agree with everything I'm sure. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh God. Amen. So yes, over the last seven weeks, we've been talking about the creation, the cosmos, the beginning, the end, and all points between. And then for the second half of summer, let's bring it all down to more concrete, ordinary, day-to-day -day Christianity. We're going to talk ordinary time. We're in the season of, we're in the Sundays after Pentecost, but about 70 or so years ago, it was called Ordinary Time. And that might sound a bit dull, but it's a perfect season to talk about finding the presence of the infinite God in normal life and times, in the ordinary. And this is one of the most basic Lutheran ideas that I would love the world to know. Our gospel message is not just incredibly freeing, it is immediately relevant and can change the way we deal with daily life. Martin Luther, against the idea that monks and nuns and priests, preachers are any closer to God than ordinary people doing ordinary things, Martin Luther once said that a father changing his baby's diaper gives more honor, worship, and glory than a thousand monkish prayers. Even before his own marriage, Luther wrote that God, with all his angels and creatures, is smiling, not because that father is washing diapers, but because he is doing so in Christian faith. Those who, he went on, those who sneer at him and see only the task but not his faith are ridiculing God, who created and is in that child. Indeed, 
Indeed, they are only ridiculing themselves with all their cleverness. They are nothing but devil's fools. I love Mark up there. It's not about the task, but a Christian awareness and attitude which takes some thought and, and discipline. It is a growing, growing realization that just about everything we do, every person we encounter or deal with, can be an opportunity. Not just a job to finish or a problem to solve or some person to handle, but an opportunity with Christian curiosity to learn, discover, and appreciate. Even when it is a challenging challenging time or challenging person to be able to step back and say God how can I deal with this person in this way in a Christian way let me try an example though right here at Redeemer here at Redeemer we're trying to remodel the basement bathrooms over there basement bathrooms it's a project with several goals such as raising, raising, or finding the funds, finding someone, uh, someone to do the project, to take it on, and then remodel them. But let's start with why. We could say we're remodeling because they are outdated, musty, and unfinished after the abatement. Or we could point out that public buildings, strictly speaking, are supposed to have adequate facilities for any groups using the space. In other words, I could just lay out the dry purposes and goals. But we, in all things, can take things to another level and take on projects out of Christian purpose and love. If we are inviting community groups like AA and Al-Anon to carry out their tasks, since we value them and their purpose, we want, we want to show them by providing comfortable, accommodating spaces. And since we are inviting moms and preschoolers or, or wedding parties, we think about the function and details with love for the people that we anticipate will need them. Meeting goals, as important as they seem for the mission, for the survival of our church, meeting goals are less important than how we meet them. And the people we meet include and love along the way. Sometimes churches and Christians don't do things the easiest way, but the way, but, but the way that will include and love and involve. And sometimes when we're in the middle of stuff, we stop everything we're doing. We turn off the table saw, or we put down the box, or we even postpone the task for the sake of a volunteer or a vendor or anyone who needs to be listened to or prayed for. Working together side by side is more important and worshipful than what we're doing when we remind ourselves that all of these other people and creatures are made and loved by God. This is true as a congregation in what we do together. But I want us in these coming weeks to become more and more aware that, that we aren't just a congregation on Sunday morning, but throughout the week. Every one of us is an extension of the ministry of Redeemer and the whole Church of Jesus Christ. In fact, arguably, it's more important what we do in the rest of the week that shows our true worship of God. This is how we remain prepared with our lamps lit, as Jesus suggested in our gospel lesson. We are storing our treasure in heaven when we take the time to think of these important, in some ways, easier goals that are too often overlooked just because we don't take the time. People are more important than projects or programs. Agreed? People are more important than projects or programs. How we do things is more important than what we do. 
each week, for the next several weeks, I'm going to challenge you to try a simple daily discipline that I hope will help us celebrate our ordinary time and include Jesus more and more in our normal lives. This week, it comes from our Old Testament lesson. It was a very stressful time for old Abram, and, and he and Sarah were still waiting for their promised child. He had just been victorious, defeating enemies, rescued his nephew Lot, and, and received high blessings and honor from the priest Melchizedek. A lot had happened, but Abram was getting very old, and now he's trying to make sure to secure his line and future after them. In his vision, the Lord, the Lord could have just said, settle down, Abram, I'll keep my promise, and eventually you will have 6,473,256,671 descendants. Instead, instead, after sunset, when all tasks were done, the Lord told Abram to go outside and look at the stars. Count them if you can. And in that, God was reminding Abram not only of his promise, but his, his extravagance, his love for creation and life, his expanse and ability, and in the middle of it all, his love for little old Abram. So for the next week, I want us each to try to find time to watch the sunrise or sunset, or take five minutes to look at the stars. If you miss that, it's okay. You can take a leaf or a flower and look at the individual petals and veins. Imagine a cell structure. And then think about all the connections that you make in a day or a lifetime and the innumerable ways that God has and is able to work for, through you. And finish by simply asking God to make you more and more aware of him in others and in each moment. For one week, each day. Next week, I'll give you another assignment. Will you stand and pray with me? Holy God, we know that you are everywhere present. We ask you to waken us more and more to that. And Lord God, I pray that you will speak to each of us in unexpected times, unexpected places, and unexpected people. Amen. Join in singing our, uh, our hymn of the day, number six, 764. chosen to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock. Have good cheer, little flock. Have good cheer, little flock. For the Father will keep you in his love forever. Have good cheer, little flock. Praise the Lord high above. Praise the Lord high above. For he stoops down to heal you, uplift and restore you. Praise the Lord high above. Thankful hearts raised to God, thankful hearts raised to God. For he stays close beside you, in all things works with you. Thankful hearts raised to God. Let us confess our faith using the the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Especially we name before you. Help us to trust your promise and not to be afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Also with you. Let's take 2.7 minutes to exchange peace with each other.
It is. <sighs> okay. Time's up. <laughs> Ding a ling. <laughs> there we go. Okay, please make sure to read through your um, the prayer concerns and everything in the uh, this week's happenings for announcements. Um, did want to make special mention of the uh, this afternoon. We'll have a taste of Madagascar. Uh oh. He saw Mama. <laughs> so, Taste of Madagascar, the doors will open at 3. Our program starts at 4. There's lots of food. There'll be um, items that are there for the uh, silent auction. Um, music. In fact, we'll get a small taste of, of that music in just a bit. Um, my wife, Maida, and her friend, Nana, are going to sing for us during the, the offering. Yeah. <laughs> Are there, oh, um, I, Sarah, you wanted me to mention, do you remember when we collected all those coins, when the kids collected all those coins, and uh, there was over $400, I believe, that we collected that day from your spare change. So we're going to do that every week now. Just kidding. You'll carry the bucket, you're right. Um, we are we're going gangbusters and trying to figure out what to do with the bathrooms. As I mentioned in the sermon, we um, hopefully can uh, collect enough money, but uh, that, that project is marching forward. We're going to hopefully get that done this fall, but um, a much needed fix downstairs. If you want to help with that, there's still the giving tree on the, the door here in the Fellowship Hall. Um, that helps us, and we are gearing up for mops as well in the fall. Uh, so we hope those are done before then. Um, anything else? Yes, Dave. Uh, birthdays. We do have Betty Larson's was on the first. We did sing for Betty, but Peg, uh, who watches online, um, hers is on the 11th. So any other birthdays? Let's sing happy birthday to Peg. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. our worship of God through the collection of our tithes, our regular tithes and special offerings, and this offering of music. Buddy, you're not even looking at me.
We pray together the operatory prayer. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ. And the Spirit whom you poured out upon the church and your people, and so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this gave thanks and said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this, and as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and to your whole creation. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ, our nourishment.
body of Christ is here. The body of Christ is here. This is Christ's body. Christ's body. The body of Christ. The body of Christ is given to you. This is the body of Christ. The body of Christ is given. Christ's body is given to you. The body of Christ is given to you. The body of Christ is given to you. This is the body of Christ. Christ's body is given to you. God loves you. His name is Jesus. He'll never let you go. The body of Christ is given to you. 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 This is Christ's body. This is the body of Christ. This is Christ's body given to you. Christ's body is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. Christ's body is given for you. Christ's body is given for you. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you today. Have the body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you, Ron. Christ's body is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Christ's body is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. I invite you to stand for this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Praise to you, O God of mercy. Thanks be to you forever. Raising high the weak and lowly. Thanks be to you forever. From of old you loved and sought us. Thanks be to you forever. Truth and justice you have taught us. Thanks be to you forever. Strong is your faithfulness. Strong is your love. Remembering your covenant of life with us. Praise to you, O God of mercy. Thanks be to you forever. The weak and lowly, thanks be to you forever. Thanks be to you forever. 
we pray together the post-communion prayer. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, I believe, is number 774. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning